Hi, Kids in Connect. This week, we're continuing to focus on Jesus, part two of four. In this one, it's called Jesus Makes All Things New. Let's go find out what the Kids in Connect learn about this. See anything? Still looking. You won't find anything. My plate is perfectly clean. Ha! A smudge. A smudge where? Right there. No way. Mine even smells good. Mine smells better. <laughs> Are you guys sniffing plates? Maybe. Can you help us decide something? Sure. Jake and I can't agree on whose plate is the cleanest. Can you settle this? Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I like that balance. Hmm. This is nice. Hmm. Got the edges. Okay. Well? Ooh. Oh. This plate is incredible. It's the cleanest plate I've ever seen. But that's not one of our plates. That's Mike's plate. Wait. How did Mike get his plate so clean? We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Mike, and this is the time we learned how to make all things new. Hi, Mike. How's the cleaning going? Oh, it's going good. A little rough, though. I think I've got scrubber's elbow. I'm not sure it's a thing. Tell that to my elbow. Hey, we got a new postcard. This will give you a break so you can nurse that scrubber's elbow back to health. It's a thing. It's not a thing. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. This is from a kid named Warner. He says, Dear Connect HQ, whenever I play baseball with my friends, I'm always the last one to get chosen. It's kind of become a joke to pick me last, no matter what. Everyone laughs about it, except me. Do you think Jesus really cares when people treat me unfairly? What should I do? Man, that's a tough one. Yeah, I know what it feels like to get picked last. It's never fun. Where should we start looking for advice for Warner? I think I'm gonna go talk to Olive. I think Alyssa said that she used to be a semi-professional hockey player before she came here, or was it a rugby player? Maybe soccer? I don't know, something sportsy. She's about to have insight what Warner should do. We'll keep the spring cleaning going in here while you're gone. And we'll look for some links while we're at it. Perfect. Keep resting that elbow. It's a thing! It's not a thing. Yeah. Most doctors would say it's not a thing. Hi. Whoa! Olive, you did a really great job cleaning this place. I could eat off this floor. Now that wouldn't be the best idea. Thanks for the compliment, though. How's everything going in the hub? Uh, we just got a postcard, and I was wondering if you could spare a minute, because I'd really like to pick your brain. We could use your advice. Sure, I'm happy to help. Okay, cool. Um, uh... What? I don't know where to sit. Right there. But you could eat off that bench. This verse. Yeah, this is the verse that I was thinking about. Revelation 19.16. It's not what I know. Would you teach it to me? Sure thing. It goes like this. Revelation 19.16. Revelation 19.16. On his robe at his thigh was written this title. On his robe at his thigh was written this title. King of all kings and lord of all lords. King of all kings and lord of all lords. In this verse, the person wearing the robe is Jesus. No matter who's in charge or what's going on, we can trust that Jesus is always in control. Even when things seem unfair, I'm sure this verse will help Warner feel better. Alrighty, verse link, check. Now it's time to get back to cleaning. Yep. You know what? When someone asks me to clean, I never feel like doing it. But once I start, it's actually not so bad. I know, right? I think I actually <laughs> like cleaning. Not as much as I do. Give me a break. You're just competitive. There's no way you like cleaning as much as I do. Well then, I challenge you. What? 
I challenge you. Challenge accepted. On guard. Oh, that's tough. I feel sorry for Werner. I know, me too. But I figure with your background in team sports, you may be able to help me figure out something. What sport did you think I played? Doubles tennis? Golf. Wow, right, that's what Alyssa said. Though not an example of team sports. No, but I know what it feels like to be treated unfairly. My dad loved that my brother played basketball, but he didn't care that much for golf at all, and that was hard for me. I bet it was. Were you able to fix things with your dad? Well, I asked God to help me have the courage to talk to my dad about my feelings. And me and my dad had a good conversation, and he made the effort to love golf just as much as he loved basketball. You know, asking God for help would be a great place for Warner to start, too. For sure. When we ask God for his help to do what's right, he shows us how we can. You can help Jesus make all things new. Ask him what he made you to do. You can help Jesus make all things new. Ask him what he made you to do. So if you see something or experience something that isn't fair, God doesn't want us to do nothing. We were given gifts so that we could be able to make the world around us better. Huh, is that why you love cleaning? Yes, it's my way to serve God and help those around me and make my world better. Huh, well I wonder if there's a way that I can serve God and help others and make the world around me a better place by eating gummy bears. Hmm. I like cleaning more. No, I like cleaning more. Hey, 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 what is going on in here? Aren't you guys supposed to be finding, I don't know, links for Warner? Or finishing the hub so we can finish the spring cleaning? We found the burst link. And look at this place. I see we've done a great job cleaning too. Oh, yeah, but, well, what about that fight I just walked in on? We were fighting over who likes cleaning more. Uh-huh, okay. Actually... Actually? We're not the only ones fighting. What? Oh. Why you lost me? Whenever we face something that's unfair or unjust, and we want to fight for what's right, we're not alone. Jesus is with us, and he's fighting for what's right and good. Oh, I see where you're getting it. He's the good king who loves us and has power over everything. We can count on him to stand up for what's right, to bring hope to people who need it, and to set us free from the evil things in this world. Wow. That will go great with the point link me and Olive just came up with. Now all we need is a Bible link and we can make that transmission for Warner. And since the hub is almost clean, we should be just about done with spring cleaning too. What was that? Should we go check that out? We have a small problem. What happened? Follow me, quick. Whoa. I'm so sorry. I was trying to just clean up and I broke into this big box of feathers and then this vat of syrup spilled over and toppled and it's been just a domino effect from that point on. That's an impressive mess. I've never seen anything like it. Are those marbles mixed in with the syrup? Yeah, and I don't even know where they came from. This is like, this is just a room we don't usually have to clean, so. I know, I know. I just thought it needed a little sprucing up. Well, it's gonna need a little bit more than that now. <sighs> and I, ju I just knew it would just take a few minutes. Oh, well, right now it's gonna take a little bit longer. I don't think I can even see an end of this mess. Where would we even start? Guys, I know this seems terrible and endless, but it reminds me of a video I saw recently. Let here. Ah. Ugh. Uh, let me pull it up for you. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book 
is alive. Genesis. Why is there a talking snake in the garden? I know, it's very strange. What's even more strange is that the Bible doesn't say why or how the snake even got there. The Bible simply introduces us to the snake as this creature that is in rebellion against God. And it wants to get other people to doubt God too, to lead them away from God and to death. Whatever the snake is, it's the source of evil that infects our world and our lives, even still today. But there is still some hope, because right here in this story, God makes a really interesting promise to Adam and Eve. God promises that a son of Eve will come in the future and he will crush the serpent's head and destroy evil at its source. A hero. The ultimate hero. But during this battle, the serpent will bite the heel of our hero. They destroy each other. Right. It's this really strange but beautiful promise. So, when the New Testament introduces us to Jesus of Nazareth, he's not just some random guy. He is the one who has come to fulfill all the ancient promises. Jesus goes around Israel saying that the goodness of God's kingdom is here now. He stands up to the effects of evil by healing people and forgiving them for their sins. With all the amazing things Jesus was doing, people started believing that he was the promised king. Jesus began telling his closest followers that he would become king and bring peace by taking the burden of humanity's evil. The fatal snake bite wound. Exactly. With Jesus dying and all, it seems like the serpent wins. It does at first, and then the story would be a tragedy, except for what happens next. Jesus rises from the dead. So now, Jesus has the power over evil and death. The rest of the New Testament says that Jesus' power over evil and death is now available to us, so we can stand up to the effects of evil in our life. Then, why is there still death and evil in the world all around us? I mean, it's still a big problem. That's where the end of the biblical story comes in. It describes a day when Jesus comes back and finishes the job. He destroys the snake once and for all. Jesus defeats evil and restores the goodness of the garden here on earth. Guys, think of this big mess as all of the unfair and unjust things that we see in the world. Sometimes it can seem like there's no end to it. Sorry, again. It's okay, Olive, really, because there is an end to this mess. And one day there will be an end to injustice and unfair things in the world too. When Jesus comes back? Exactly. One day in the future, Jesus is going to come back and finish his fight with evil. He'll bring with him a new heaven and a new earth and reign over everything. We can have hope because that day is coming. And until that day comes, we can still fight evil with Jesus now. You've got it. We can use the gifts that God has given us, caring about others, standing up for what's right, praying, giving gifts to others, and showing God's love to others to do good and right in the here and now. I think I see something we can make right, right now. This mess won't stand a chance against us. You ready, Olive? Let's do it. Well, that only took, um... A few hours. Mm -hmm. Well, at least it's all clean now. I can't thank you all enough for your help. I can honestly say that I've never seen the basement cleaner. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our spring cleaning. We are officially done. Not entirely. What about answering the postcard? Oh, that's right. Well, I can't do it. I think I actually have Scrubber's elbow. <laughs> I know what that's like. Well, uh, I can do it, though. It may take me a while to get back down to the hub. Uh, uh, oh. Hey, Warner, I'm Mike, and I'm a part of Connect HQ. And I wanted to share this verse with you. It goes like this. Revelation 19.16. On his robe at his thigh was written this title. King of all kings and Lord of all lords. No matter who's in charge or what's going on, nothing can change that Jesus is the king of everything. And it gets even better. One day, Jesus is going to come back. And when he does, he'll finish the war on evil and bring a new heaven and a new earth. He'll rule forever and everything will be good and right and perfect. And because of that, we can have hope now. 
We don't have to wait until Jesus comes back to fight for what's right when we see things that are unfair or unjust in the world. He's given each of us gifts to make things right, here and now. We can work with Jesus right now to spread his love to everyone around us. Getting picked last and being made fun of is really tough. And I'm sorry you're going through that, Warner, but know that Jesus does care about you and he wants you to stand up for what's right. You can help Jesus make all things new. Ask him what he made you to do and he'll show you how to make a difference right now. Remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. You are a knight now. I am now Knight Mike. Ooh, that sounds like a superhero name. Jesus is the good and loving king, and he's gonna come back to reign forever. And he wants to be your friend. Isn't that amazing? If you've not made the decision to make Jesus your leader and number one friend, you can today. All you have to remember are your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. Did you make that decision today? If you did, I'm so excited for you. Be sure to talk about it with a parent or leader you trust. So they were doing a lot of cleaning uh, in the Connect headquarters. And that does make you think of new spring cleaning and getting things bright and fresh. But the amazing thing is that we have the privilege of working with Jesus to make things new right now, here in our world, in our sphere of influence, the people we know, our family, our schools, um, our clubs, that you can help Jesus make all things new. Ask him what he made you to do. And again, that is the wonderful thing. Each one of you has a place that God has created you to work in. And when we see something wrong, injustice, or we see something that makes our self our heart hurt for people who are without food or without homes or without, we can work to do what Jesus wants to make things new, to be a part of that. Not to just sit back and feel like everything can't be changed, but to know that with Jesus's help, we can be involved in making things new, giving hope to others. So this week, look for ways to make things new.